Hello, good evening, my dear friends from all over the world in the big EAC family. I would like to thank the International Young Academy of Cardiology Board and the KVAC Board for giving me the honor to participate and join in this world-class conference. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. I wish you all the best of health and success in your careers. And hopefully next year we will be able, all of us, to join each other together physically and meet each other in the next EAC conference. So my topic will be involving coronary bifurcations, the decision-making and management strategies, and this mainly involving the provisional versus the two-stand strategy. So what's a coronary bifurcation? A coronary bifurcation is a significant coronary narrowing occurring adjacent to and or involving the origin of a significant side branch. And why it is important? Because it accounts for nearly 16%, which is one out of six of every case of PCI. It carries a higher rate of procedure complications, nearly one out of 10 of every case. And maybe it has a lower rate of initial success rate, especially when using the complex two stand strategies and unfortunately, putting a lot of metal gets a higher rate of restenosis, nearly one out of three cases. Lots of classifications are available for the coronary bifurcations, from which the most famous one is the Medina classification. The Medina classification gives us seven options, where the first digit describes the mother vessel, and the second digit describes the mother branch, and the third digit describes the side branch. So we get a 111 if the atheroma is involving all of them, and we get a zero if the atheroma is not involving, so we get a 101 in the second image, and a 011 in the third image. Only three of those seven, which I previously described now, are the true bifurcation lesions, which involves 50 to 70% of the overall bifurcations. The others, the 110 and the 100 and the 010 and the 001 are not considered as true bifurcations. So what's a complex bifurcation? The complex bifurcation is the one actually that needs a complex intervention to treat it. It's a true bifurcation involving more than 50% lesion in both the main branch and the side branch. And the burden of the severe atheroma extending beyond five millimeters to the side branch ostium, taking into consideration that this side branch will probably need a stand because it's a large side branch, more than two millimeters in diameter and supplying a significant volume of ischemic viable myocardium. So a complex bifurcation lesion is a true bifurcation lesion that will need us to make a complex intervention mostly involving a two-stand strategy to treat it. So technically, I need to assess the main branch features, the side branch features, and the angle between the main branch and the side branch. So we assess, of course, if the lesion is significant or not, the proximal and the distal vessel diameter in the main branch, the presence of calcification and the distality of the vessel, on the side branch also, you should assess the atheroma burden, whether it's localized to the ostium, less than five millimeter from the bifurcation or extending beyond five millimeters, assessing the proximal diameter, whether it's smaller or bigger than two millimeter, and the extent of the volume of the myocardium affected and the calcification and distality. Regarding the angle, it's very important to recognize the angles that less than 70 degrees versus the angle that are more than 70 or closer to 90 degrees because there are some favorable techniques according to the angle. And then after that, you need to know to assess the sizing of the vessel. How can you assess the main branch? The main branch or the mother branch is equivalent to two over third multiplied by the sum of the mother branch extension and the daughter branch or the side branch. So you add them together and you multiply it by two thirds, like we see in this diagram here. 
And the angle of bifurcation is important because if you put a side branch stand and you try to adjust it exactly at the ostium, if the angle is more than 70 degrees, the upper lip and the lower lip of the bifurcation, as you can see here with my mouse, the upper lip and the lower lip are more or less aligned on one single line. So if you put the stent, which looks like a rectangle or a cuboid, the stent will actually cover both of those ostium since they are at one line. But here, if the angle is less than 70 degrees, you will miss a part of the upper lip if you adjust it at the lower lip. And if you put this stent actually proximally up there and you try to cover here the upper lip, you will have a significant length of the stent protruding into this vessel here and causing flow obstruction. So this is important because it helps you for wiring the side branch and it helps you to understand the effect of what's known as the carina shift and it helps you to choose the appropriate technique in case of two stand strategy. The next thing is explaining what is the meaning of the carina. So let's say that this is one river here and this river gives two branches and you are standing here at the river side or the river bank. You can put your foot in the water here actually or you can swim here near the river bank and you will not drown because you know that the velocity of the blood flow in this direction is actually low at those sides. But also you know that the highest velocity of the blood is actually here at this zone. So this zone is actually the flow divider or the carina. We need to know actually when there is atherosclerosis involving a coronary bifurcation, actually most of the atheroma burden is located here and here and not located here. So it's not located at the carina. So if you put a stent extending from this main branch towards this side branch, for instance, and this flow divider or carina is moved towards here, you will get a pinch in this side branch. And if you get a pinch in this side branch, you should not be so worried because actually, actually no problem because you just need to dilate here and reconstruct or realign this carina to its normal position again. So the carina is usually free from atherosclerotic lesion and the side branch compromise is usually due to carina shift rather than atherosclerotic plaque shift. And there is the importance of the carina kissing because it actually realigns the carina to the proper place. And as you see here from histology, this was what I was describing to you, that you have the atherosclerosis actually here while the carina is more or less free. So the next step is how to decide regarding this bifurcation, how you're gonna plan your intervention procedure. You need to record several views from various angles in order to obtain a comprehensive picture of the lesion characteristics, of course, and to carry out the technical procedure appropriately. So of course, you need to identify the significant lesions, the hemodynamically significant lesions whether by intracoronary imaging or intracoronary physiological studies or very tight lesions that are more than 90% by visual estimations, taking into consideration that they supply a significant amount of viable ischemic myocardium. And then you decide to choose their strategy, whether provisional stenting from the mother vessel extending to the mother branch and crossing over the side branch this would be favored if at least you have four out of five you have a, an ostium of the side branch which is healthy the side branch diameter is small the side branch lesion is not extensive or long it's easy to access the side branch even if a carina shift occurs or the side branch is not important even if i lose it because it supplies a small volume of the myocardium of course 
if this stuff is reversed, actually, you will be favored to be using two stents in case of 111 true bifurcation. Side branch diameter is big. The lesion is really extensive in the side branch. It's difficult to access, so you need to actually secure this side branch by stenting it first, or this side branch cannot be sacrificed because it supplies a large volume of myocardium. Of course, you need to prepare your tools, your guiding catheter, wires, balloons, stents, and then you should go with your steps. So, are you going to wire both vessels in every single bifurcation as a routine? This is a very debatable issue. Yes or no, you need to assess the diameters of the main branch and the side branch. You need to assess the angle to choose the technique and need to do decide the one or two stem strategy as we said previously. So people who are defending wiring of both vessels, it's safe, it maintains access to this side branch whatsoever happens. It allows you to modify the angle if the carina shift occludes the side branch. And here you need to look at the carina like a sliding door between two rooms. The door is located between the two rooms. If you open one room, which is one side branch, I mean, the door is shifted automatically to the other room, to the other side and occludes it. So if you have a wire, if you have a little piece of rock opening this door, you can still maintain access to the second room. But if you do, do not have a wire, you do not have an access to this, actually the room could be totally closed and you cannot open this door again. It marks the side branch patency in case of any salvage procedure, as we will see on later, and it helps you to anchor your guiding catheter and it can help you in many, many bailout situations. As you can see, this is one of them. You put the stent provisional from the mother vessel to the mother branch. You crossed over the ostium of the side branch and you could not access. It's occluded. But since you have this wire, which is even behind the stent struts, you can pass a very small balloon, one or 1.25 with a single dot, and you can easily dilate this very small space here and you can maintain access to the side branch using a third wire. You can pass from here to there and then you can perform a pre-dilatation here to the side branch or this stent and then you can have a pot and then you can access the side branch. Side branch pre-dilatation before putting the stent in provisional stenting is not a routine. So side branch wiring is a wise decision, but routine side branch pre-dilatation, no. Why? Because there's a risk of dissection and most of your one stent cases will be automatically shifted to two stent cases. But sometimes you need to do a pre-dilatation, especially if there is a subtotal occlusion or there is a very long lesion in the side branch or the side branch is calcified ostium and it's difficult to access, then it would be better to prepare the side branch before you do the provisional stenting. And then you come to the stenting, so you need to choose the stent diameter. Do we choose according to the main vessel? Do we choose according to which? We choose according to the distal landing zone size. And then after that, you will do a post dilatation proximal to the flow divider here with your non-compliant balloon distal spot landing just at the flow divider. This is called the pot. And as we can see here, you put the balloon immediately proximal or the distal margin of the balloon or the distal shoulder of the balloon will be just touching the flow divider and you will do the dilatation here proximally. And this is called the pot. Of course, the pot will allow you to make a rewiring to the side branch easily and would allow the full expansion of the mother stent and it and will avoid the mistake of rewiring under the stent struts. As you can see here from this angiography and IVIS image, from the baseline, this is a bifurcation lesion involving only one of the daughter vessels 
and here you put a provisional stent towards this vessel and then you got pinching of this one because the carina was shifted towards the side branch here after that you made a simple dilatation to this one side branch here and of course the carina was repositioned again and everything was fixed you did not need to use two stents here so after that if you're going to perform a two stent strategy you need to rewire rewire from the mother vessel to the side branch and here you need to rewire across the distal cell of the mother vessel stent for the final kissing inflation and after that you will perform the final kissing inflation using short non-compliant balloons so as you see here if you perform a wiring through the proximal strut and then you do the kissing you get a deformation of the stent opposite the ostium of the side branch versus here if you pass through the distal strut and then you make your post or your final kissing inflation what do you get you get very good scaffolding of the ostium of the side branch of course remember that the final kissing corrects the side branch compromise it corrects the deformity of the main branch stent it allows proper scaffolding of the side branch stent and it realigns the carina or reconstruct its position so both vessels are open thank you so much and hopefully we can see you physically and meet face to face in the next EAC conference